We're here at the ID Tech Hack show here with Nova Centis. And uh, who are you? I'm Francois Janot. I've uh, joined Nova Centis about two years ago to focus on uh, haptic application for this uh, very unique polymer based so haptic been showing technology. These, uh, um, flexible haptic feedback, right? So Which is, uh, you're the only ones in the world who can do this? We are right now the only one in the world who can do that. We, uh, the, the big benefit of our solution is that you can embed multiple actuators inside the surface of the product. So that could be in the wristband of my watch, for example. It could be on the wristband of the watch. It could be on a heart rate uh, monitor kind of band. It could be on headphones. It could be in any kind of device that you wear. E-textiles, this e -textiles. is perfect for that, right? Exactly. You can feel uh, who's calling you on your shoulders, maybe. You could feel uh, directional information. So if you follow a trail uh, running and uh, your map is uh, telling you take a left turn or right turn, you can, you can feel a sensation that tells you take a right turn or take a left turn. If so you have how a far are we from this being real? So we have so, announced uh, about six months ago a relationship with uh, our manufacturing partner, Kemet, uh, with uh, making our product in high volume. High volume. So Kemet is a company that is a world leader it's in a field based capacitor. And to make our actuators, it's exactly the same way. And right here we can see it, the uh, yeah, vibration. Yeah, so what's interesting about this demo is that you can see that our tweeters can move at any kind of speed. Which means that we can create very different kind of sensation uh, on each of the actuators. And as fast as the sound. Like if, you, if you actually go into the kilohertz range, then the vibration creates sound like any other speaker. So we can combine Haptic feedback in the uh, hundreds of hertz, 50 hertz, 20 hertz kind of vibration. If you go into the kilohertz, you can write sound. That's another kind of uh, we call that module that enables us to embed actuators in hard surface kind of a device. So this would be a kind of a gaming controller. Years and later, as with the wristband, we can embed multiple actuators in different locations of the device. So, so how do you thing. hold it? Instead of having the full device shakes with only one frequency well, and you get a annoying bzz, buzzing kind of vibration, yeah. we can create very localized sensation yeah. that can be underneath each of two fingers so in the, in the, in the in your palm. So there's actually a vibrator there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. One here. There, I mean, there are eight different actuators embedded into this uh, kind of demonstrator. And you can, again, feel the sensation very locally. And you if can, you want to vibrate all eight at the same time, you can do also. You can do that too, yes. Uh, other kind of interesting form factor will be a glow. Where you can have embed a sort of flexible glow that people can use to interface with virtual elements into the virtual world. And you could have actuators at the tip of each finger so that when you grab so, so objects or when you scroll menus into your virtual world you can feel sensation and feel the feel the uh, the elements that you are touching. You can even have maybe up to six for each finger like in front and then behind. Is it's that too much? It, it's interesting to see that uh, when people start to build prototypes and use our technology they always want to put more because they say okay how about the middle finger how about this? How about uh, the top of the hand? Really? So we are working on a number of uh, projects in the VR, AR kind of controller space where the number of actuators is more than five, more than just one for fingers. We have uh, projects where the number of actuators is even greater than 10. So uh, this is for the VR kind of like gaming market? It's not just gaming. Uh, VR and AR are becoming uh, very successful in other market segments than just gaming. Yeah. Uh, and uh, VR now is a combination, or VR AR are combinations of virtual elements and real world elements. But you need to be able to grab objects in the virtual world. And uh, you have technology that keeps track of your hands and protect your hands inside the virtual world, but you don't feel anything when you move them. This technology is, an, is, is a way to augment the experience by being able to feel when you interact with objects. You can feel textures, you can get a sensation when you grab things. But how would you record the feelings? You would have to uh, create it the, like uh, later, but could you have like a machine that will record what you should feel somehow? Well, there's a number of uh, universities and organizations we have recorded 
textures, for instance. So they use uh, different kind of a system to measure the vibration that happens when you move across uh, 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 leather or glass or any kind of a different kind of things. Can you simulate that with your actuator? You can simulate this by replaying the similar vibration that has been recorded uh, when you actually touch touching the texture. So suddenly it feels like you're touching glass. So, so we, are, we still have some work to be done, but, but we can definitely create different sensations if you feel glass, or if you feel plastic, or if you feel garments. And, and, and it's like based on vibration? It's based on vibration, that's, that's the type it's of... Based on the, yeah, the problem with uh, uh, this material and that application... The speed of vibration, kind of. This is what, what, in the real world, that's what's happening. Our sensors are oh, sensing so different kind of vibration as you move across. Different but textures. He the, and the high this end, is the information we send to our brain. So our actuators can be uh, can be used to recreate this, this uh, type of vibration, so that our brain is tricked by uh, by those, and, and our brain feels that uh, we are actually touching different type of structures. So if I touch the table, maybe it's a kilohertz. If I touch here, it's 200 uh, hertz. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But when you record the sensation, you can really see and model the vibration very precisely and we have a way to replay those kind of vibration that you can record in the real world using deformation and vibration that mimic the real vibration. So I'm hoping that in the last few months and uh, recently and uh, in the near future you have a lot of uh, big companies yeah, well, talking with you. We, we are already engaged with, no, we are engaged with a number of companies now and we are working on projects that have the potential of being released uh, toward the end of 2017. 17, yeah? 2017. So a little bit longer, we have to wait, but it's coming. A little coming. bit longer. It, it is coming. Uh, maybe some of those products will be announced uh, by mid-2017 as a kind of prototype, but uh, production is planned now for the end of 2017. Can I, can you put this as a strap for my watch? I'd like to, I'd like to feel when somebody's calling me yep. with, the, with patterns, uh, and this is the future of the smartwatch business. So. That's the idea. I think uh, notification is a very important part of uh, wearable devices. And uh, if you use standard technology that are small motors that vibrate and only vibrate with the bzzz, you can feel it on your wrist. Uh, our brain is very good at detecting patterns in different locations of our body. So on the left side or the right side. Uh, on the t on, on, so, so we have the capability to create uh, notification langu language through vibration, through haptics, that any user will be able to feel. So yes, the idea is to be able to feel different things, different sensation for different type of notification. So uh, are you having meetings every single day with a bunch of companies and talking to them about this all the time? Well, I, that's the only thing I do, pretty much. Yeah? Yes, but <laughs> and uh, do people like say yes, or there's some, oh, there is some concerns? Well, there is a, no, there is a lot of uh, excitement about what we are doing. Now people are telling us, when can you deliver in volume? Uh, and we are going to be able to do that with our partners. Uh, uh, and we expect to be able to, to volume. support volume production again. By, and and good, good price. By the end of 2017. The way we make our products is a roll-to-roll -roll, uh, kind of technology. So, so with volume. With uh, volume. Volume is our friend, and with high volume, we will be able to make this uh, product at a very cost-effective uh, cost, cost way. Maybe it's going to be in every garment, uh, smart, shirt, yeah. smart jacket, smart everything. Absolutely. I mean, that's we have the potential to, as touchscreen became a must-have in any kind of display. People now touch displays, and if it's not a touchscreen, people are surprised. We have the capability to create localized oh, vibration in any any device, any surface. We can make smart buttons anywhere. Uh, so we have the, the potential to have a, a, really, a unique experience which consists of getting the surface of the object we are using talk to us through vibration, through haptics. So everybody who's working in the e-textile business, uh, Google Project, Jacquard, all these people, they need to consider using this. Yep. All right, so looking forward to buying shirts and, and watches and everything with this. Yep. Thank you.